What's up, YouTube? Philip Grimro back here with another deck profile. Uh, I've been kind of slacking on these things a little bit lately, but I wanted to show you guys kind of my new toy I've been playing with in uh, Prophecies. Uh, they're like an archetype of like spellcasters, like, and they use their uh, spell cards like search and like kind of toolbox and stuff. Uh, really fun deck. Been doing pretty pretty well in um, the OCG. Uh, whenever the uh, Abyss Rising comes out, they're gonna get some more support and be like pretty, pretty competitive. They're uh, a lot of people have been saying that they're you know not quite up to snuff yet, but I've been doing pretty well with my deck so far. Uh, let me get to the build here. Start off with three Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Uh, he's like the you know weenie Stratos of the deck. Uh, level two when he's summoned. When he's normal summon or flip summon, you can search for a spell book from your deck and add it to your hand. Um, really like this guy. Makes the deck extremely consistent. Auto three of, in my opinion. Uh, three Temperance of Prophecy. Uh, during the turn that you activate a spell card, you contribute this thing to a uh, special summon one, level five or higher, light or dark, spellcaster type monster from your deck. And you can only special summon one level five or higher, you know, monster once per turn. This guy's kind of like the thing that makes this thing a little less broken. But this thing is really good in order to get out um, your big beater, who I'll get to in a second. Uh, also of note, this thing can summon Dark Magician of Chaos. A lot of people were speculating it would come back on the September 1st ban list. Because of this deck, it didn't. But that would have been really nice for this deck. Break it in half. But uh, still... Really good, uh, helps you get out like the main focus of the deck, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, so another auto three of for the deck. Here we go, High Priestess of Prophecy. She is sort of what the deck revolves around as far as monsters go. Uh, seven stars, 2500 attack, 2100 defense, same stats as Dark Magician. Uh, you can special summon her by revealing three spellbook cards from your hand. Um, and then once per turn, you can banish a spell book from your hand or graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls. So she's kind of like the Hyperion of the deck. Um, she can special summon herself, or you can special summon her with Temperance as she's a, a light monster, a light spellcaster. So that's the reason why you run Temperance. Uh, definitely all the three of the deck, she is like insane. She, she's, you know, the Hyperion of the deck. Uh... Level 7, she's going to rank 7, stuff like that. Just, uh, she's the main focus of the deck. She's the big beater. She's the reason why this deck wins. She's insane. Uh, 3, Breaker, the Magical Warrior. Uh, Dark Monster, 1900 attack with a counter. Remove the counter, pop a spell card. Uh, nice plus. Uh, just really good. Ha has been, like, probably one of the best spellcaster monsters since it came out. Uh, three, because you can run three of them now. Nice plus. Uh, beats over stuff. Really good. One Strength of Prophecy. Um, this card, it, it might be cut by the time the next set comes around, uh, uh, Abyss Rising. Uh, but as a one of, like, a beat stick, it's pretty nice. Uh, she's four stars, 1500 attack. You can return one Spellbook card from your graveyard to your deck. To increase the level of one spellcaster monster by one and its attack points by 500. So, you know, you probably make her like a 2005 star. Uh, she really helps with the. Uh, not only um, giving you like more uh, exceed options, so you can go into like rank five or whatever, make your guys, you know, what you need them to be and then exceed. But she also, and she, recy she also recycles your spell books. And um, she also helps get over. Uh, important threats, most notably uh, Thunder King, as Thunder King like shuts this deck down because it's all search. Uh, so she's just a one of as sort of like a beat stick because that's really all you need her to do is just you know attack for two thousand or whatever. Uh, she might eventually be cut, but she's been putting in a lot of work. So just one of her. Three Apprentice and one Old Vindictive. Uh, when I first got these cards, I saw people were starting to put the Apprentice engine in this deck. I was really skeptical because this engine has been 
you know, slow and not that good for, like, you know, years since this card, like, came out. It's been, like, kind of subpar. But when I put, when I first made the deck without Apprentice, it was super inconsistent. And then just, like, you know, summon my Magician, and then just, it would, you know, that's all I could do. Uh, I put this thing in here, and it's been working surprisingly great for me. As it just gives you an option, just to, you know, first turn, set, uh, take a few hits, special summon, you know, another copy of itself, all, all vindictive. And it also uh, can search out Magician. So you can put your Magician face down, and then, you know, next turn, flip the face up, get its effect, search for your spell book. Um, also, a Dark Monster for uh, Chaos Food, and they're also all level 2, so it, he helps you go into uh, rank 2 pretty easy. So, um, again, another card that might be cut once Abyss Rising comes out, but right now this has been working surprisingly well for me. One Tsukiyomi. Um, this card was a card that came off the ban list with, you know, w when it came off, half the people didn't have a clue what this card did. Uh, and it, get, it got banned, like, you know, way back in the day, because this was a main card in the uh, Go Control format with Thousand Eyes Restrict. And then right after that, with um, when the Monarch format started to, come, started to come along, this was like the Monarch killer. So eventually this card got banned, but essentially it's a uh, four-star uh, Book of Moon on legs. You just summon it and then flip the monster face down. Um... Out of all the hype this thing received when it came off the ban list, it hasn't found a lot of ways into decks. But I've been testing this thing in this deck, and because you know it's a you know four star spellcaster dark monster, so this is obviously the deck for it. And it, this thing has been working really well for me in this deck, as it's just an answer to any. Well, first it, it can be an answer to any problem that this deck has, as this deck has a few you know glaring weaknesses, and it can also help with uh. Uh, Spellbook Magician, Apprentice, Old Vindictive to flip your own guys face down, flip them back face up. Uh, and then, you know, exceed it off in a rank 4 if you can. Um, some people have just been citing this. I've been main this thing. It's been working very well for me. So, if you had to run this card in one deck, it would be this deck. So, definitely old, or, um, Tsukiyomi. 3 Effect Veiler. Um... This card's like a semi-staple now, but you definitely need three in this deck. It's uh, a light spellcaster. Um, shuts down your opponent's monster's effects to protect your guys. It's also, uh, people forget that Effect Failure is also a tuner. So, um, effect with uh, one of the other spell cards, uh, Spellbook of Life, this has become like your primary tuner and help you synchro in the deck when you can just bring back a... a Veiler from your graveyard, it's level in increased, you can sink it off. Uh, so, definitely three of, also light for Chaos Hood, I think I said that already, but very important. One Chaos Sorcerer, um, I'm not running BLS in this deck, I'm, ru I'm actually running him over BLS, as crazy as it sounds, but as good as BL BLS is, this guy has a few advantages over him in this deck, particularly. Uh, for what, most notably, he's a, a spellcaster, so he can receive support from all the spellcaster uh, support cards that are the spell cards and stuff that are in here. He's also a level six, so as a you know, BLS is a you know level eight, and you can't really exceed him off. This guy you can exceed off with um, himself, and then like a life, uh, a monster ball back by life. You can go into a, you know rank six if you so choose. So just another option. But, uh, he's still insanely good for the deck, even at one. Uh, definitely worth running the extra, like, light and dark, so you run the, the Veilers, you run the Apprentices, you run the Breakers, stuff like that. Just for him. Pop, pop, a, pop a threat. Uh, exceed him off, if you can, with the life. Uh, so definitely one Chaos Sorcerer, it's just, it's still too good of a card, even at one. And then, one Gores, uh, level seven, helps you go into rank sevens with, a uh, Hype Priestess. Uh, since you're usually just gonna, like, you know, summon your Magician, and then your field's gonna be empty or whatever, uh, this guy's really well as a hand trap. I've also seen people run, um, Tragodia too, as another sort of option, as they go, like, you know, summon Magician, 
Tricotis out there. But uh, Gore is definitely very nice in the deck as well. On the spell cards, three spell book of secrets. This is kind of like the uh, the rota of the deck. It can uh, search for any spell book card except for itself, and you can only activate one per turn. Um, so you can grab any of the the magic card with that, or it can also grab spell book magician, which is what I usually grab it with, as I would go activate this. Some of the magician, magician get another spell book, and I, you know, maintain my uh, advantage. Uh, so definitely three of this thing, just more toolbox. Three spell book of wisdom. This is kind of like a themed uh, spellcaster for Ben Lance, as you can uh, select one spellcaster on your field, and then select to make it either immune to traps or spell cards for the turn. Uh, Essentially, this kind of like replaces MST in the deck, as it's a you know it's just really good, helps protect your guys. It's also a spell book, so you can um, use High Priestess with it. So uh, definitely three of of this card because it's just it's really I cannot put in words how good that card is. Saved my butt a few times. Uh, two spell book of powers. Uh, this is a surprisingly good card. Um, you can target one spell cast a monster you control and it gains a thousand attack per turn. And when that monster destroys a monster by battle, you can search your deck for one spell book card and add it to your hand. So this is sort of like an alternate means of search. Uh you know, so it will uh, replace itself when your uh when it destroys a, when your monster destroys a monster by battle. And then uh the a thousand attack boost can help get over stuff, get over threats, because this deck has a few cards that can shut it down. Or just, uh, you know, increase a monster, go for game, stuff like that. I only run two just because of space, but it's another very solid Spellbook card. Also, two Spellbook of Life. This is sort of like a themed monster reborn for the deck. You have to uh, banish one Spellcaster monster from your graveyard, one other Spellcaster monster from your graveyard, and reveal one other Spellbook card from your hand. And then you can select one spellcaster monster from your graveyard and special summon it. So, um, because the cost is kind of kind of hefty, as you have to have a spellbook in hand and uh, another spellcaster in your graveyard, I only run two and I have a million ways to search it, so I don't really need to. But um, the cool thing about this is that uh, you can revive whatever monster you want to from your graveyard, and then uh, its level will increase by the level of the monster you banish. So. You know, you can either bring back a fallen uh, high priestess if you choose to, or you can bring back uh, something like a veiler. And like, if you you know, say you uh, banish like a level two uh, magician to revive a veiler, then um, the veiler will become a level three tuner, so that you can then synchro the veiler off with like a level four or whatever for uh, Arcanite. So um, this. Sort of opens up like the synchro option a little bit with Valor, which is why the deck runs three Valors, as um it makes Valor into you know a surprisingly good synchro engine. Uh, just you know, theme monster born very good. Also a spell book. Two duality. More search. Two wonder wand. Uh, this was another card along with Apprentice that I was really iffy on to begin with because I'm like uh wonder wand whatever. Something like, I was like, you know, gonna run Magical Dimension or whatever over this. And then when I actually played this card, and this card started just, like, winning games for me after the draws that this thing gave me, I'm like, yeah, I gotta run too. Um, definitely works very well with the Apprentice Engine, which is another reason why I, I run it, because this thing, you just pop off a little guy, draw two cards, and then you can just go off with Priestess from that. Uh, so, really good draw engine for the deck to help maintain... Uh, card advantage and give yourself an edge. And then one heavy, one monster reborn, one dark hole as your staple spell cards. No trap cards in this build right now because when I played trap cards, I just found them that I was dead drawing them too much. They weren't uh, spell books because I need spell books, as many spell books as I can for like high priestess and stuff. Uh, just it, it became dead way too often. Um, Maybe like post Abyss Rising, I'll put some traps in here as other cards from that set will make some of my plays easier, and then I can afford to run some traps. So stuff like a Torrential, Call the Haunted, 
uh, Mirror Force, some of like the really powerful traps uh, you would run in here, but right now I'm not running any traps. Uh, extra deck, Die Gusto Phoenix, Gachi Gachi, and Shining Elf as like my rank 2 options. This is probably my most common uh, exceed play is to go into rank 2 with the Magicians, with the Apprentices, with the Old Vindictive, stuff like that. So, um, uh, Digusta Phoenix for damage, as he's essentially a 1500 double attacker. Uh, Gachi for defense. And then Shining Elf is a surprisingly large body. It's a 1600 attack spellcaster monster, who, uh, when your opponent summons a monster, you can detach material, and that monster will lose 500 attack. So, if they try to, you know, summon something to beat over him, you can just, like, detach... And then it's it's all of a sudden really, really tiny. So, level 2 options. Uh, Zen mains for the rank 3. Um, don't really go into him very much. It's another very situational card. But uh, The thing about the extra deck for um, Prophecies is that you don't really need it to win. So, you can uh, sort of fill it with kind of like tech cards. Like, really, I only ever go into... Um, Rank two and then rank seven on a con on a consistent basis, and then uh, because of life and the uh, level altering effect of life as well as strength, I can sort of fill in tech cards in here as I needed. Uh, Maestro and Utopia as your sort of generic rank four options, as that's sort of another common rank to go into. Uh, Adrius as your rank five option, use like strength with something you bring back with life. Uh, just, you know, another option. Same with uh, Strike Bouncer as a rank 6 option. Y usually, I would make this with um, a Chaos Sorcerer and then something that would bring back with um, Spellbook of Life. So I would banish, uh, you know, a Magician, bring back a Breaker or something like that. And then they both be level 6, go in the Strike Bouncer. And then my rank 7s, uh, Higher Fan of Prophecy, and then Big Eye. Um... It's pretty easy to go into rank 7 with this deck as I run the Priestesses are 7 and they're just spammable. As well as Gores is also 7 star so I can exceed him off. Usually I go into Big Eye as my first option and then take their monster. Uh, and here Fan is kind of like a second option as he's sort of like a, a Heavy Storm or like a Harpy's Feather Duster on legs for spellbooks. And then also some Synchros. Um... Level 5 is Cataster and Librarian. Uh, Librarian is a spellcaster, so it works really nicely. And then I, I don't spam uh, Synchros as much in this deck, so I would rarely draw off him. But if I'm playing a deck that would, then I get the advantages off that. And it also works with the spellcaster support. And the Cataster is just really good as level 5. Uh, Tempest Magician at level 6. This thing is just, um, it can win games, just, uh, Put spell counters on stuff works very nicely with a uh, Arcanite Breaker itself, and then you can remove spell counters to inflict 500 damage per counter, burn for game. Arcanite probably one of the best level sevens. Um, just pop two cards, really nice with a uh, Apprentice and Tempest, as you can just put spell counters back on him and just keep going. And then the level eight is a uh, one Scrap Dragon, just really good card. Uh, so yeah, um, this is what I've been kind of playing around with right now. It's done pretty well for me, uh, but this deck has a few very glaring weaknesses in that, um, A, it's shut down by Thunder King as the deck is a ton of search, some like Magician and Secrets are just shut down, like Duality. Thunder King stops all that. Um, the Churia Beast negates your spell cards, and as you see, I run a lot of spell cards, so that card is a huge problem. And then probably the the biggest problem that I've had playing against this deck, and now it's probably going to be one of the most common problems, is the first turn Shockmaster. If, you, if, I'm, if you're playing wind-ups or heroes, and they go Shockmaster and call spells, you have very, very limited options at that point, as you have to either summon the High Priestess through her own effect, or Tsukiyomi that um, that Shockmaster or whatever. Uh, probably once I start running traps post Abyss Rising, this deck will probably have better answers for those. But uh, right now, those are like my three main enemies for this deck. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, peace out, YouTube.